There is a company that recently surpassed Amazon and Google to become the third most valuable company in the United States. And that company is NVIDIA. And their core business is creating GPUs, which are a type of computer chip used to train and run AI models such as ChatGPT. Now, their CEO, Jensen Huang, recently went to the World Government Summit and stated that people should not bother learning how to code anymore because soon enough we're going to have AI that's powerful enough to just understand human intention and be able to create any sort of program that you need without having to actually learn how to code. Now, I've spent my whole career in software engineering, working my way up to a director of engineering position, and now running my own AI consulting firm. So I definitely have an opinion about all of this, but let me first play the clip of what Jensen had to say, and then I'll share my perspective. I'm gonna say something and it, it's, it's gonna sound completely opposite um, of what people feel. Over the course of the last 10 years, 15 years, um, almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you it is vital that your children learn computer science. Um, everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program. And that the programming language, it's human. Everybody in the world is now a programmer. This is the miracle. This is the miracle of artificial intelligence. For the very first time, we have closed the gap, the technology divide has been completely closed. And it's the reason why so many people can engage artificial intelligence. It is the reason why every single government, every single industrial conference, every single company is talking about artificial intelligence today. Because for the very first time, you can imagine everybody in your company being a technologist. Mm. The people that understand how to solve a domain problem in digital biology or in education of young people or in manufacturing or in farming, those people who understand domain expertise now can utilize technology that is readily available to you. You now have a computer that will do what you tell it to do, to help automate your work, to amplify your productivity, to make you more efficient. So I like the way that Jensen presents AI as a way to make human the true programming language. And I think that's a good idea. So in the same way that most people don't know what is physically happening inside of their phone or in their computer, Jensen sees a future where we don't have to worry about the software pieces of it either, where people can just interact with a computer through natural language, just like we do when speaking with other people. And we don't have to learn a special syntax like coding to make it actually do what we want. Now, one issue I do have with the way that Jensen presents it is that he presents it as something that is already here, already happening. And to some degree, that is true because we are seeing a lot of capabilities with ChatGPT being able to code entire components, being able to troubleshoot things. And we're seeing these agent frameworks pop up where you can give it a certain instruction like to build out a whole game like Snake and it'll be able to actually build it out for you. However, I do think he's exaggerating on the current capabilities a little bit because the current models don't usually output perfect code and it can often take a trained eye to see the subtle problems that are in the code that these models generate. And that doesn't even touch upon the fact that once you wrote the code, you have to actually deploy it, you have to connect it to the different databases, different services, and all of these other activities that are typically involved in a software engineering role that aren't explicitly coding. Now, things are definitely going in the direction that Jensen is talking about and they're moving there quickly so I do think in the next few years we might get to a point where you can give a prompt and get a whole product as a result but we're not at that point just yet. So if you're thinking about getting a four-year degree in computer science I'm not sure that that's the best way to actually learn coding and I don't know if that would be a really great idea. Even though you'd learn a lot of core concepts I think a lot of experience really comes from on-the-job training and actually having experience solving problems. I'll get into that a little bit later. Now there are different ways to actually learn how to code. You don't have to go and get a four year degree to learn how to code. You can start simply with an online course or even with just chat GPT. I think it's never been easier to actually learn how to code because you could ask chat GPT to tell you how to actually build something that you want to do and what approach it would take. And it will actually start explaining to you how you might go about building that. And it can write the actual code and explain how certain parts of that code work. Now, if you run into errors, you can paste them back into ChatGPT, have it explain them for you. 
make edits, and slowly start to understand the kind of syntax of whatever language you're trying to learn. So while signing up for a multi-year degree at a university might not be a very practical way to learn to code nowadays, I do think you could actually learn how to code and make really effective use of that skill if you do it the right way through just online courses, YouTube videos, and working with ChatGPT. But even so, why would you even bother to learn how to code if it's going to be automated soon enough? Well, I think the important thing to acknowledge is that a good software engineer isn't just good at coding, they're good at actually solving problems, seeing requirements and understanding how to break those down into smaller pieces that they can implement, how to weave everything together, how to connect different systems, how to architect things so that they scale, all of these different skills that don't necessarily have to do with actually coding. Now coding is often the way that you actually implement your solution, but it's only a small part of what it means to be a software engineer. And in fact, the most senior engineers will really just spend their days in meetings and figuring out how to actually build things, doing architecture, and discussing different trade-offs of using various different technologies. They have a deeper understanding of the space, and that's the sort of deep domain knowledge that Jensen is talking about being valuable in the future. So software engineering doesn't go away as a practice, even if a lot of the coding actually gets automated. So the real takeaway there is that problem solving is really the core skill of a software engineer, and coding is just a way to implement the solutions that you come up with. And if coding gets automated, well, that just gives us as engineers more time to actually solve problems. But of course, there is no degree in problem solving. So learning how to code can be a good way to expose yourself naturally to really interesting sets of problems that we currently use coding to solve, but might not have to in the future. The important thing is to find some real problems to solve and start solving them. And if coding is the best way to solve those problems right now, you might as well learn it and start building that problem solving muscle. Because a lot of these skills are just going to be fundamentals that are gonna to apply to solving any kind of problem, whether it's coding or not. And there's one more thing that I wanna talk about, which is coding for the sake of coding and actually enjoying it. This is something that a lot of people do enjoy doing. It's kind of like writing or playing an instrument and you could actually enjoy solving problems and writing beautiful code and re-abstracting things. So if that's the case, you can continue to do all of that. Just because we have AI generated music doesn't mean you need to stop playing your instrument. It doesn't decrease the value of that. Unless of course you're trying to monetize that, but I'm really talking about from the perspective of personal satisfaction, personal enjoyment. You know, computers have been able to beat people at chess for a long time, but in recent years, chess has had a big resurgence in popularity and people just like to play chess against other people, even though computers can actually beat all of these champions. And I see the same thing happening across all of these other industries. So just because we can generate AI art now, we still have artists who are enjoying the craft of doing art. And I think we're still gonna have coders who enjoy the craft of coding, and there's nothing wrong with that. So in a world where a lot of these activities are going to be automated and able to be handled by AI, I think a lot of skills are gonna become unnecessary, but that's just going to open up opportunities for us to spend more time on the things we find meaningful to ourselves. And if coding is a hobby that you enjoy, more power to you. So on the one hand, I do agree with Jensen that coding is going to become a commodity skill. And if you have a lot of experience with problem solving and deep domain knowledge, this is not something that you absolutely have to learn. On the other hand, it's never been easier to learn how to code. And right now there are so many opportunities that you could take advantage of in building something special before everything gets automated by AI. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Take care.